guys, it's Gabby, and today is a week five of Hamilvember, the final week of Hamilvember. It is Tuesday, November 29, 2016, which means it is my 16th birthday, and as you are watching this, I'm probably seeing Hamilton in Chicago. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm having an amazing time. And if you want to see my vlog for this entire night, it will be up next week, so you're gonna have to wait for it. Hey, Hamilton reference. So that being said, for today's Hamilton video, I am going to be doing the Casting Hamilton tag. This tag was created by Danielle from Simply Thoughtful Books back in August. The minute that I saw this video, I knew I wanted to do it just because it seemed like a lot of fun for a Hamilton book nerd to do. Basically how this tag works is you take fictional characters and cast them in the role of Hamilton the Musical. You can single cast like Danielle did in her original video, which I will have linked down below. Or you can double cast like I'm going to be doing in this video. Personally, just because it was easier for me, although I haven't seen anyone else do it this way yet. So I'm excited to kind of see how this all comes together because ultimately, I'm really happy with the characters that I picked for all of their roles because I feel like they just fit really well. So if you hear me saying that a lot in this video, it's because I feel like there's nothing else that I can say as for why I pick certain characters other than the fact that they fit. So now that I've gotten that all out of the way, let's get started with this tag. Name Alexander Hamilton. My name is Alexander Hamilton. And there's a million things I haven't done. So first things first, we have to cast our right-hand man, Alexander Hamilton. He is somebody who is charismatic, determined, intelligent, and arrogant. And these are descriptions that Danielle put in the description for her original video. So if you want to see all of those, like I said, her original video will be linked down below. But anyway, for Alexander Hamilton, I casted Jasmine De Los Santos from Something In Between by Melissa De La Cruz. Jasmine just fits Hamilton in so many aspects. Within the second chapter of this book, there's already a Hamilton reference that mentions my shot. And ultimately for me, reading that Hamilton reference second chapter was that moment where I just had this major connection then reading the rest of the book that Jasmine had a lot of these Hamilton qualities. And for anyone who's read this story, they could definitely very much agree. And for a lot of you, probably don't know Jasmine's situation because this is a newer book, but she basically is an immigrant that comes into the country as Hamilton was an immigrant who came into the country and you know in coming in she's always been somebody who's very intelligent and very determined to make her mark in this country and to prove herself as a US citizen and so that finally pays off for her senior year of high school when she receives this National Scholar Award that could send her to meet the President of the United States and also get a full ride to the college of her choice. So obviously very, very intelligent. And also you find out that she's like the captain of the cheerleading squad and that she has a lot of friends. She's pretty, she's popular, so that definitely fits in the charismatic aspect. And so then she comes home, she tells her parents about the scholarship and she finds out that she's an illegal immigrant in this country and that she's not able to accept the scholarship and she could possibly get deported. So now she's having to figure out how to get out of this situation and in doing so that's also something that makes her very much determined. And then she develops this arrogant like quality as you start to read more about her through this book because she starts to be more concerned about herself and her own issues rather than her friends and these other people who've stood by and supported her through this entire trial. She kind of ignores them and becomes a little bit more obsessed with her own problems and herself. So you start to see her work that out throughout this book. And ultimately the reason that I gender bended this character and she was the only role that I gender bended for is because I feel like there's not a male character that could fit this role as Jasmine does because she just fits perfectly. Pardon me, are you Aaron Burr, sir? So we can't have Hamilton the musical without Aaron Burr, sir. He is a character that is jealous, reserved, and self-motivated. I had to choose Tamlin from the Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J. Mass. He is a character that Act one, like Burr, you're kind of cool with him, book one, and you're feeling like, he's cool, I like Tamlin, I'm rooting for him, I like him, just as you're kind of like that with Aaron Burr. And then suddenly act two comes around, book two comes around, and it's like, oh, we're not so cool anymore, like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I trust you, like, oh, this got bad. So they very much have the similarities in terms of the plot line. And Tamlin ultimately is a character that's very jealous, very reserved, very self-motivated, and he just fits all those descriptions. Again, another character that I picked because it just fits. And ultimately, biggest reason why I picked him is because of the story arc, like that whole thing I just described, immediately hands down for me was the reason that I had to pick him for this role. Angelica! Getting into the two Skylar sisters now, first we have Angelica, who is loyal, strong, and sassy. For this, I had to choose none other than Hermione Granger from the Harry Potter series, because Hermione is 
Angelica. I can't not feel that way because personally I would like to believe and I don't know whether this is true or not and I feel like I read it somewhere that Lynn took qualities from Hermione in writing Angelica's character which I just ultimately would see and I would think that that would make sense because they have so many things in common and I just see them so much in each other and I think that they could be like the best of friends because of how similar they are. They could be like twins because they're just that similar. Hermione is very loyal to the causes that she supports. She's definitely a very strong character, as you see a lot of what she goes through throughout the series. And she's also a character that is very sassy because she has her comebacks and her quips. Like that moment where she punches Draco Malfoy, hello, sassiness times a thousand. So she's, she is, Angelica, she is, she is. Don't, don't try to argue with me on this because she is. Eliza. So we can't have an Angelica without an Eliza. Eliza is a character that is described as being caring, loyal, and a cinnamon roll. For this, I had to choose Tessa Gray from the Infernal Devices series by Cassandra Clare. And again, I feel like Tessa is one of those characters that just really fits Eliza. She is definitely very caring to Will and Jen throughout the series. She's very loyal to them. And she also is very much of a cinnamon roll. She's just one of those lovable characters. And I feel like anybody that's read this series immediately falls in love with Tessa because she is just a lovable character. And she's somebody who's very intelligent and very just fierce. And I feel like ultimately just is Eliza. I see so many qualities of Eliza and Tessa. And I just think that she would do amazing in terms of playing Eliza if she were to actually go on stage. Like, I would love to see, based on all the characters that I've chosen, I would love to see this thing be, like, a actual Broadway musical. I think that it would be the greatest thing in the world, and it would just be perfect because I feel like all the characters that I chose just fit so well, and Tessa is no exception to that. Da, 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 da. So now we get to cast one of my favorite characters, King George III, and he is the villain that you love to hate. And for this, immediately I had to go to my go-to character for these types of questions, Peter Hayes from the Divergent series, because Peter is not so much of a villain, and King George isn't so much of a villain either. Like, yes, he's made out to be the villain in this story, because obviously he was holding America back from freedom, but again, like, you know, not every villain is actually a villain type thing. And Peter's a character that ultimately biggest reason why I like Peter. I hated him reading the books, but then suddenly you cast Miles Teller as Peter, and he has the sass factor times a thousand that just immediately was like, thank the Lord, because Miles Teller is ultimately Peter Hayes. And then ultimately for me, I don't look at Peter as book Peter anymore. I look at him as Miles Teller because the, Miles Teller has ultimately stolen this role for me because of how well he plays it. And I think that he would be an amazing King George III. I just think it would be funny because not only is Peter just like psychotic, there's some things that are wrong with him, but he has his good moments. And I think that that would be something interesting to see play out in King George III. I just think that it would be really, really funny. I would love, love, love to see that. Here comes the general. Ladies and gentlemen. Here comes the general. The moment you've been waiting for. Here comes the general. The pride of Mount Vernon. Here comes the general. Wash Getting to our final single casted character, we have the general, George Washington. And for this, I chose Plutarch Heavensby from the Hunger Games series by Suzanne Collins. And this was one that I felt a little bit odd about at first, but ultimately I decided to go with it because Plutarch is the leader of the revolution, ultimately. Katniss is a face, but Plutarch is the one that's sort of guiding her, although ultimately Katniss does become that sort of leader-like quality and does ultimately decide to do her own thing. So Plutarch is the one that's controlling all of this initially and is sort of the reason that she becomes the face of the revolution as sort of George Washington is one of the reasons why Hamilton becomes so successful is because George Washington sort of put him out there as that face. So I think that that just sort of works and I see that the corresponding way that, you know, Washington's plotline carries out throughout the series is very similar to Plutarch and for that reason I had to pick him because ultimately I just feel like, again, characters that fit and I feel like he fits the role really well and for some reason the minute that I casted him it just clicked. Everyone give it up for America's favorite fighting French man! Mr. Jefferson, welcome home! Now, getting to our double cast of characters, we have my two favorite set of characters. You must meet Thomas, Thomas, and Lafayette. So for this, hands down, I had to pick Magnus Bain from the Shadow Hunter Chronicles, again, by Cassandra Clare. Magnus! 
Can you imagine Magnus in that purple outfit? Like, hell yes. And I think he'd be a perfect Lafayette. I could totally see him spitting fire. And I could see him being super sassy like Thomas Jefferson. I just see it. I see it so hard. I can't even describe to you how much I see it. But I think it would be hilarious. I think it would be great. And I am just so here for this casting. And I think actually Danielle did the same thing that I did in this. Because I just feel like ultimately he's just one of those immediate characters where you're like, yes. Because he is. He, it fits. Hello. Like, yes. And we know that this plan would work. We had a spy on the inside. That's right. Hercules Mulligan. In the place. My friend James Madison red in the face. Next we have Mulligan Madison. So the spy on the inside. And for this, let me, let me explain. We have Severus Snape from the Harry Potter world. Of course, by J.K. Rowling. And for this. Snape is the spy on the inside, as Mulligan is, so that's kind of why I chose him there. And then Madison is a little bit more, like, reserved, a little bit in the back, and he's sort of like Jefferson's, like, second man, which is kind of, you know, like, how he is to Dumbledore, and then also kind of to Voldemort, in a way. So, I felt like that fits. So, I, like, just based on that alone, based on both of their plot lines and the roles that they play in the story, I feel like Snape fits. Although, you know, like, that would be kind of scary to picture, because Snape is just one of those characters where he's very, very highly debated as for whether he's a likable character, whether he's, like, misunderstood or not. So, I don't actually know. But, based on plot line alone, I had to choose Snape, because they just have that similar plot line in terms of being that spy on the inside that... Uh, you know, is going on both sides and is defending both sides. I'm John Lawrence in the place to be. Daddy, daddy, look, my name is Philip. I am a poet. I wrote this poem just to show it. So the next set of characters we have is John Lawrence and Philip Hamilton. And for this, this is the final Mortal Instruments character that I've chosen, Simon Lewis. Simon is John Lawrence and Philip Hamilton. He's the precious cinnamon roll, he's lovable, and I love Simon. He is probably one of my favorite fictional characters out there because he's just so lovable and nerdy and sweet. And Alberto, Alberto Rosendi, plays Simon perfectly because he's read all the books. And he just does the character so much justice and ultimately, I picture him as a Lawrence, as a Hamilton, and I would love to see Alberto, like, doing that. I think he could do a great job, and ultimately, again, all these characters I've chosen just really fit their subsequent roles really well, and I could see Simon Lewis as a John Lawrence and a Philip Hamilton because they're just these sweet, lovable, like, characters, and I just, yes. Yes. That's when Miss Mariah Reynolds walked into my life. And so now we have our final double casted role, Mariah Reynolds and Peggy. And so for this, I picked Lysandra from the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Mass. And ultimately, I feel like Lysandra sort of fits this role because she is very manipulative and she can be very cunning when she needs to be, as Sarah J. Mass generally tends to write very sassy characters. But I feel like she can also be an Aunt Peggy because she's a little bit in the back and I feel like she gets very much underappreciated and I would love to see more of her character because I think she is a very unique and very interesting character once you see more of her and once her character is more developed. So I feel like she fits both roles really well. And ultimately I was choosing between her or Joanna Mason but I feel like we don't get to see that more soft side of her, like that Peggy side of her that I had to go with Lysandra. And I just think, again, it's another one of those characters where I feel like, personality-wise, she just really fits the role. So that is it for the Casting Hamilton tag. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So comment down below what character you would cast for King George III. I would love to know what your guys' thoughts are. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys are having an amazing week, an amazing holiday season. Do not throw away your shot. I will see you, oh God, <laughs> I will see you next time with a new video. Goodbye, guys!